I was proud of the effort tonight. I was most proud that we didn't have really lose focus in the entire 40 minutes. Even when we got a nice lead, we didn't come out and, and start playing uh, bad basketball. We still hit the open man, was the go-to man, made the extra pass, had good ball movement, played, played with good passion and energy. Uh, there are some things we need to get better on. Uh, as I was just saying about the, uh, you know, the first part of the game, I knew we were going to struggle a little bit just because of the nerves and the butterflies, which is very normal. But for us, there's some things, some three things I felt that we need to do better at. The first of all, we allowed them to shoot 42% from three-point range, which is way too high. Too many times we had our hands down, and they shot over us. Um, secondly, I would say uh, turnovers. I mean, we had 19 turnovers, and 10 of them were from our front line guys. That just can't happen. we got to be better at that. And then the other thing is, which is great, we got to the free throw line 44 times, but we need to make free throws. We shot 66%. We need to be at the 77% mark. So those are some three things that we got to get better at. But overall, really proud of the guys. Played hard, competed, and um, um, you know, Lemoyne Owen gave a, a very good effort. Their will coach just happens to be where we got got on a run, and you know, we kind of wore them down with their depth. Uh, but as you guys see, we we've got some good got players, and. Um, Managing the minutes is not going to be easy, but the great thing is production and we can play tonight. Can you talk about guys going into a game just like they go into practice with this array of talent battling for playing time down the road, battling for starting jobs that they want to go out there and put their best foot forward? Well, I mean, competition breeds excellence, as I've said so many times. What makes it nice is it gives us a chance to um, really have an opportunity to, to let the uh, best guys um, earn the spots and earn the minutes. It's not going to be easy. I mean, every 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 practice is going to be uh, there's going to be competition. Uh, we'll have to make sure that uh, you know again the guys that are producer and the floor. But I'm just going to be honest with you. I, mean, I recognize this is going to be probably an issue. I hope every game we have a, a big win because I can rotate everybody. But um, you know, in the reality, it's not always going to be like that. And then we yeah, got to determine right. who the top you know guys will be yeah, in that rotation. That's, right. that's going to be rotation. Yeah. Is there a number, though, Josh, because when you have so many quality players, you know, you talk about wanting to be 10 deep or 12 deep. I mean, you could literally be 10 or 12 deep, and how, how much do you close that rotation when games count? You know, Mike, that's a great question, and, and, and I don't know. I mean, and because I, I'll be honest with you, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Do you, can you really – because you look at – I was talking to Rick Barnes this, this uh, fall, and we had a long talk about it and um, because he had the same – you know, had a lot of good players and they had a deep rotation. He and I talked about it, and he gave me some really good advice about it, some really good pointers. And, you know, that's one of the things. Do you go play a 10 and 11 deep or do you play more 8-9 in those minutes that would go to 10 and 11 and give them to the 7th and 6th man? So it's something that me and the staff will have to determine – um, but again, we're going to do what's best to give us the best opportunity to win night and night out. You were, you were very vocal on your bench. A lot of times, I mean, you did some substitution when guys didn't dive on the floor, but you also got after some guys on the bench coaching wise. I mean, is that kind of the way you have to approach this team with so many new guys, so many freshmen? That you got to teach them on the spot. Yeah, I mean, we're going to teach them on the spot. I, I tell you, as hard as it was last year when the transition and just so much to do, it has been the same as in terms of exhausting. You know, of the, of the summer and the preseason because, I mean, our guys are great. I love our guys. But because it's eight new players and you're reteaching everything from, the, from point, you know, zero, basically. You know, you're the system and what you want. And so that takes a lot of time. And also understanding the structure and discipline and everything within the transition to college. But i got to give credit to these players. The players have done a wonderful job of picking everything up. They are good, good people. We have high character student athletes, and uh, that's what makes it enjoyable to coach. That's what makes it hard about the playing time stuff, because we have good guys. And when you have good people, you want to be good to good people. And probably one of my, I guess, things is I want to you know, take care of everybody, but I understand there's only 200 total minutes in a game. Um, and that's that's something, but because we have good people, I want everyone to be happy. But players have seemed to react not with selfishness, though. I mean, there was, right. the, there was the play from Joe yeah. to, to Chris to Tarek that was sort of right. essential. Is it, is it an unselfish group? It's a very unselfish group, Jeff. And the other thing is, our point of emphasis I really believe you are what you emphasize. And we have emphasized more than anything about, about making the extra pass. The open man's a go-to man. We've had more team chemistry and team building sessions than I've ever been part of because I want to be proactive on this because I recognize we do have a young team. Um, I mean, we're, we chart and practice how many high fives we give, how many daps, how many times guys give verbal communication. 
I mean, we chart that. And um, so we're trying to do everything we can to make sure that we have a positive bunch. And that and it, and it becomes, um, uh, you know, it spreads throughout when you have a lot of positive energy. Once you walked off the court, how long did it take you to realize, you know what, we just saw that offense, 12 players score, and two McDonald's All-Americans didn't play? Well, uh, the referees came up to me and said, man, you got a real serious problem on your hands. And I thought, oh my gosh, did one of our guys use vulgar language to himself? <laughs> and he says, how are you going to find minutes for everyone? And I said, look, I got two guys that, who are not even playing who are pretty good players too. I said, you're right, it's a problem. But you know what? I'd rather have that problem than not. Um, and um, we'll have to deal with it. And again, I hope every game we can win by a lot of points so I can play everybody. But I go back and I'm just being honest. I want to be able to play everybody a lot of minutes mm -hmm. because they are good guys. And out of loyalty, I want to do it, but I recognize it's not reality. And eventually, we'll have to get to a rotation. But that will take some time, for, again, as we keep moving through. But as Jeff said, if they buy into team concept, championship or bust, you're not going to have an issue. Correct. It's, it's, when one yeah. individual goes astray, that, that's going to be a problem. Correct. And, 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 and I understand that guys, who, when we get to it, maybe a rotation, if guys aren't playing as many minutes as they think they should, or not, I can understand they're not going to be as happy with me. And I recognize that. And that's part of sports. That's part of anything. Um, but those are things that, even in that situation, guys like that have to be ready because you never know when your name gets called and you're in and you make a play. And um, I mean, it happened last year with Drew Barm or DJ Steffens. That you know, we threw them in and at the time. And, I mean, how many times last year did DJ Steffens help us win a game because of his energy and, and just unexpectedly because we weren't really getting some, some uh, you know, we, we needed some to be energized. So guys have to be ready at all times. This was a kind of game, though. You know, you knew what to expect from Will Coleman and Wesley and Angel. They've played before. You had to be happy with the newcomers, and while some had some blips on the in the radar, you know, especially Charles and, and the way Tarek showed yeah. what you can get from the newcomers. I was, I was really proud of the newcomers, really proud of them. Uh, and I tell you, how about Charles Carmooch? I mean, I think everyone here is, including myself, because I mean, I've and I've said it that he's been better than, than everyone has anticipated, including myself. I mean, the guy has been pretty darn good, and the way he played tonight is how he's been playing in practice. Um, so you know, you got to give the guy credit, and he's pretty steady out there. But all the guys, I mean, Joe struggled at the very beginning, but then he got going in transition, obviously. He's really, really good in transition. Uh, Chris Crawford, I just think his basketball awareness, he's got an unbelievable upside, an unreal upside. And, uh, and Tark Black, I mean, Tark Black did some good work. Uh, and you see Antonio. I mean, how about Antonio Barton? I mean, he busted his butt, plays defense, and hit, came in, gave good minutes. He, he battled. So the young guys really came in and, and, and did good things for us. What's the big step now be between now and next Tuesday, knowing the season openers, you know, 10 days away? But what do you got to get done between now and Tuesday night? Just shoring up, no middle penetration, uh, taking away three-point shots, getting better on some pick-and-roll defense, uh, doing some things in transition, making free throws, just – Again, we're going to have some That's things. That's a long list. I mean, it's a long list, they're, but they're little things. They're not big things. They're little things, but we really have our foundation. And, and the bottom line, as I've said many times, you know, you're, if you've got good players, which we do, and they play hard and compete, and they play hard and compete and, and, and play with, you know, with an energy that you're going to make multiple plays per possession, you're going to have your opportunity to win more games than not. Josh, as, as everybody knows, Witherspoon is going to be the key with his maturity, which we have not seen in the past. Will he have that? Will he be a leader out there? And tonight, I thought he set the example he, playing defense, he, hustling, showing the young guys how you have to play. How Wesley Witherspoon played today is how he's played in practice, and there's no secret to it. You know, everyone talks about what's the formula to win. There is no formula. You, you have good players, and if they play hard in practice and they are sound, they're sound at what they do and they're solid, they're going to do it in the games. You just guys don't turn it on and off, and that's how Wesley was. He he practiced hard. He's played well in practice, and he's played like that in the game. So you started your five leading rebounders to send a message to your guys. Yeah, we started the five leading. Re that was because that was our emphasis. Because last year we did not do a good job on the glass. That was our weakest area. So that's why I started the five leading rebounders. You were happy. Were you happy with their production? Uh, yeah, I mean, you look at we had 50 rebounds to 23. Our goal was to get a plus five margin. So. Uh, uh, that was a, that was a big thing. We gave up ten offensive rebounds, but if you can have a plus twenty seven margin, you're going to be happy. Um, and that's our biggest emphasis this off season has been. Besides about moving the ball and sharing the ball, has been about on the glass. I mean, bottom line, we've got to be great on the glass. And uh, and how about Angel Garcia? Nine rebounds today, which has been a good sign. Did, did, did the message get sent, even though it's an exhibition, that with the quality you have on this team, the newcomers? that even if you're a veteran, the, the message is out, you better come to play. Or, better or, come to play or, you, or the, there's no better motivating factor than the bench. The second half.